Hey everyone, Arlen here. Welcome back to my Country Craft Corner. How in the world are you guys doing today? It is so good to see you and thank you so much for stopping back by to see what I'm up to today. <laughs> and as you can hear, I have been one sick lady over this past weekend. Uh, remember last Friday with my live? Well, things, and I thought it was allergies, and I remember I thought it was, oh, I was all full of stuff, and it was, no, if it wasn't allergies, I kept getting worse and worse and worse. I was a mess by Friday evening. And then Saturday is the day that we went up to my dad's, and I had talked to him on Friday afternoon and said, Dad, I'm really sick. He said, oh, does that mean you're not coming? I'm like, oh, well, I don't want to get you sick, and I don't want to get Stace and her family and my aunt and uncle sick. And he said, you come on and come. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> so I got up, and I tell you, I took, I've been using this Afrin spray. I should go get it and show it to you guys. It is amazing stuff. Uh, really, you only use it twice a day. It's nasal spray. And it has been the only thing that has helped me function, you guys, honestly. That and Advil. Uh, so I drugged myself up and up we went on Saturday to uh, see Bow the Knee. This is the production that we saw at my dad's church. And it was phenomenal, you guys. Oh my goodness. I think there were like 123 cast members, all people from the church. They sang, it was a musical, you know, they sang beautifully. Uh, it was about the crucifixion, of course, and then the resurrection. And uh, it was absolutely wonderful. You can see here how many scenes they had. Uh, uh, they had 19 scenes. Bow the knee. You can see there. all of the scenes that they had. It was wonderful, absolutely wonderful. And uh, the, the, they worked so hard on this, the scenery they had, the, uh, it was amazing. It was an amazing and amazing production. And they, were, and they invited fo folks from around the community. It wasn't just church folks who gather. It was, you know, they had a packed house. This is, he's got a big church. And uh, it was a packed house that day, so. Um, but anyway, we had a big time, big time, wonderful time. Then we went back to his place, and we all ate a little bit of something, and, uh, and we spent time together. I did not hug one of my family members because I was so sick, and I was like, no, don't hug me. I don't want to hug anybody, and I sat away from them. <laughs> well, I sat by Stace in the church. Poor thing, she'll probably get it because you know, I was sitting right next to her in the church, and Chris was on the other side of me. So, Lord willing, she won't all get sick, but... Anyway, also, I wanted to tell you, well, people have been asking me about my, my new lipstick. This is a little bit darker. I'm here to do my um, Funky Bow extravaganza, but I had this couple things to tell you first. <laughs> Sorry. But people have been asking me about this a little bit of darker lipstick that I've been wearing as of late. And this is a new lipstick that I got. Uh, and it's a Raspberry Pop. Raspberry Pop. Number 24 is the color. So there you go. That getting in focus. And then that's the color. And at first I was a little bit worried about it because I'm pretty light complected, you know, but I, I really like it. I really am enjoying it. So that's what it is from Clinique, just in case. And another thing that Chris happened to buy me we, you know when you get sick, you know how you always have tissues, you have them in every bedroom, they're everywhere, they're everywhere, until you get a cold. And then somehow they all like fly away and you don't have any tissues. What is with that? It always happens to me anyway. So I had a bunch of little tissue packages that I had to, that I took on our cruise. So I had like three or four tissue packages and I'm like going through one after the other after the other. I'm just, oh my goodness, it's been miserable, you guys. It has been miserable. I would not wish this. If I had an enemy, I don't have enemies. But if I had an enemy, I wouldn't wish it on them. <laughs> I'll tell you, I've been miserable. And I'm not wonderful today, but I am going to get this uh, funky bow extravaganza in the can. And then I probably will take a couple, since I put my wardrobe up this morning, you know, uh, 
this is Monday. Since I put that up this morning, I'm going to let that one go, and then I'll get this one up either tomorrow or Wednesday, and then I'm not sure if I'll be able to come back much more this week, you guys. I really do need to rest and recuperate, but I promised you, I promised you this funky bow extravaganza, and I am bound and determined to get it done. But anyway, Chris went out and bought me tissues. <laughs> and he came back and I pulled a tissue out of the box, you know, and I'm getting ready to blow my nose. And I'm like, oh my goodness, it's, they've got Vicks on them. Have you ever seen these puffs with plus lotion? And then check out the Vicks here in the corner with Vicks. And they smell like Vicks Vapor Rub, you know? I'm like, oh. I can smell, you know, oh my goodness, it was, I was like, I was surprised, and it almost numbs your nose when you, when you use it, no, excuse my nose, it's all like chapped, so I'm a mess, <clears throat> I didn't even have a voice this morning, I was afraid I wasn't going to be able to do this, but, because I, I was bound to determine, I couldn't have done it yesterday, y'all, I was down, and I tried my best with my comments over the weekend, so, but I, I know I did not do as well as I normally try to do, so please do forgive me, uh, you know there's something going on with me if I'm not commenting back at least somewhat, you know, at least to answer questions or whatever, you know. And there, there are times when there are so many comments that I get overwhelmed. Now, I'm going to admit that. I do get a little overwhelmed sometimes, but I try. I try my best. <laughs> but anyway, I am coming back today to do this Funky Bow Extravaganza tutorial. And I have, I'm going to make you five different bows. And... Uh, some of these I'm not sure what I'm going to do with. To be honest, I'm making them purely for the reason for this video, just to show you that I'm going to try. Um, first one I'm going to try is, remember uh, I had you, uh, the one nice lady asked me to do one with the narrower ribbon. So I've got these three ribbons. So I'm going to do that one. I'm not sure. I can't even think about how long I want it yet. I'm going to think about that in a second. Then I'm going to make one out of just two ribbons, but out of a narrower a narrower ribbon and then we'll move on and I'll show you what else we're gonna make I'm gonna make I'm gonna end it with a 12 loop funky bow though uh, but I'm as I said I'm gonna make five <laughs> so let me turn my camera over here and put it on my right hand side here your left and um, I'm sitting here at my table so we'll see how this goes I think I can manage to make y'all a couple of bows I thought I would stand at my counter at my uh, island over there but honest to goodness uh, Chris and I went out and uh, we walked uh, into I went into Michael's to look around in there for just a little bit and then I went into our at home store and when I came back out of there I had to sit down I had to have a little bit of a haul from those two places uh, that I may bring you later in the week but uh, I came out of there and got back sat down in the car and I was like I I'm exhausted I sat down and visited with Kim a little bit she was on on a live over there at Sweet Daisy Creations so I sat here just for a minute and I'm feeling a little better now so I am gonna try uh, to do this funky bow extravaganza. So here we go. Let me get this camera turned around and positioned in a way in which you can watch me do this. And we will get started, y'all. I'm excited about this. I'm excited to try to bring this to you and to teach you how to do some funky bows. All right, as you can see, I still have my Easter stuff. It's all like up there and a couple of computers sitting here. This is my computer that I always use. Right. Oh, use tissue. Y'all don't need to see that. <laughs> but I'm going to start out with this narrow, or I'm going to try anyway, with this narrow, funky bow. We'll see how it looks. I've got three bolts, and this all of this ribbon is wired. I highly, highly, highly recommend wired ribbon i wouldn't even try to do any bow any craft bow without wired ribbon y'all really and truly it just won't work as well as if you use wired ribbon so all right let me think here now i'm gonna make a i think i'm gonna make a nine loop bow and i don't think i'm gonna worry about doing the thumb uh the the ends into a uh, dovetail. Let me think. Well, why don't we try 20, huh? We'll try them at 20. All 
right? So I need, actually I think I'm gonna go ahead and do a 12 loop with this too because it's so little. So let me cut my ribbon, four of each type, four strips of each type, and then I'll come back and we'll see what we come up with for a 12 loop narrow funky bow. Be right back. Once I get all this cut. Okie dokie, folks, I'm back. Now, I'm not sure how this is gonna work out, but we're gonna try it. We will try it. Here's, I have a white pipe cleaner. I wish I had some of the, like the chenille uh, ties, like in silver and white and purple. You know, I don't, I only have gold and purple and green. So that's not gonna do me any good. All right, so let's start this out. As I said, I made all of my strips 20 inches long. So I want five inch tails. So I go to five, actually you just have to fold it in half, but just to show you what I mean by this, I wanna explain this. So you go to five inches on your board and then I want a 10 inch loop. So then I go up here to 15, I want a five inch loop, so I need 10 inches of ribbon. Let me get that right. So I start out with at, and go to five and then I come over here and go to 15 and then that leaves me with five on either end. I pull these two together to make a loop in the middle. Make sure that I have a five inch loop. But you know what? I can see already that that is going to be too, way too long. Well, maybe not. Well, we'll try it, huh? Let's try it. Look at this. This is two sided ribbon. Anyway, I want to go to the underneath tail and twist and bring that right side to up. I think these are going to be too big, these loops, but we'll see. We'll see where it ends up. So anyway, I'm just going to fold it in half from, the, from now on moving forward. Again, all of this ribbon is, and I'm going to do the first four because I'm doing a 12 loop bow. So I'm going to do the first four the same direction. In other words, let's think of my thumb as center. I'm going to put the first four ribbons, I've, I've put them in line in the way in which I want to pick them up. So I've got three, three of each four times. And then I'm going to turn the next three, the next time through the pattern, I'm going to turn it and go the other direction. I'm doing this on the short side of five inches. I'll tell you the truth. It's more like four and a half inches on the loops. Okay, so there's the first three loops. Now, this time, just fold them in half. And then I'm going to, to 15, but then I'm backing it up a little bit and to about 14 and a half. Turn it. Squish it, squish it together, and these three are going to go down from center. And again, go in to the back tail, turn it so that the right side comes to the front. And turn it down again. And for this ribbon, it really doesn't matter. It's kind of cool. To me, it's kind of cool if you see the stripes too, you know? Here we go. So again, this is the second time through the pattern. 10, 15, and I'm backing it up to go to about 14 and a half. Or four and a half instead of a five loop. Four and a half inch loop, okay. Now, here we're starting the pattern over, pattern over again, and we're gonna go the other direction again, again, folding it in half, 10 or zero to five, and backing it up to four and a half inches. And we're gonna turn it this direction again. Again, coming underneath and twisting that ribbon to the front. Again. 
15 was just, or five inches was just a little bit too flouncy for me. I think I would even like it if it was a little shorter than this, but we're going with it because that's the way I started it. But You know what, you guys? I can tell just by looking at this that I'm not liking this. I am not liking, well, we're gonna finish it though. We're gonna go ahead and finish it. I'm gonna go one more time through the pattern and turn it the other direction. How do you know unless you try, huh? I haven't tried this off camera. I've only tried it here, right here, right now. <laughs> I might like it once I flounce it all up. We'll see. I'm really picky with my bows, so we'll see. Okay. Take your pipe cleaner and put it over the top and pull it around to the back. Use the hand that you're holding the bow shut with as resistance, pull tight and twist. Some people twist the bow, I twist the type cleaner, I do both, I do a little bit of both. And there we go. And actually it doesn't look too bad, does it? Oops. And of course, as always, the most important part of any bow is the fluffing. Make sure you get all of your, all of your loops. I don't mind it. I thought I would, I don't mind it. What do y'all think? Looks okay. I think, you know what though? I think I'm gonna try a real quick one. That's pretty. But I think, depending on what you wanna use it on, if you wanna use it on a package, you know. Let's see, let's try one at, we're gonna to go to 16. Alrighty, let's try this again. So I'm gonna, again, this is 16 inches, so I want four inch tails and a four inch loop. Just really, you know what, you guys, I'm really gonna make it about a three and a half inch loop. So that would make it About like that. So fold it in half and then go to about three and a half inches. And this time, since I'm making a nine loop bow, I'm going to alternate directions every time here. I will say that this is more difficult to hold on to. And yes, still do go behind and twist. And back one forward. Fold it in half. Three and a half inches. Oh, 
pull it together using the hand you're holding the bow closed with as resistance and twist. And again, fluff, fluff, fluff. I like it. Actually, I like them both. So, you know, I definitely think you can do a funky bow with smaller or narrower ribbon for sure. Look at it. I mean, I think that's cute. It's not a huge bow. You're not going to get a really huge bow, but you can tell the difference in just the, the size of the loops there. In fact, you could combine that and that would be pretty. <laughs> See, I like that bow better if you combine the two. Or maybe make another one but or you would just have to use many 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 more pieces of ribbon to get yourself a big bow I like a big big fat bow to make a big statement so the biggest maybe a 10 loop bow out of this how about that that is if I have enough to get five strips of 20 I'm gonna go ahead and do that five strips of 20 out of each color here. I'm going to do, I, want, I do want to dovetail the ends of these. So let me show you how I dovetail. Just pile them all up. fold them in half. I go to the edge. Most people go to the fold. It doesn't matter. You come up with the same result. That gives you a dove tail. Okay, I'll be right back when I'm done dovetailing all of this. This is going to be a 10 loop bow so I'm going to do each part of the pattern up, and then once I start the pattern over, every so it'll be two loops up, two loops down, two loops up, two loops down, two loops up of each ribbon. And I want a five inch loop. And then I go underneath and twist. Again, this is a 20 inch strip. So if you go to five inches, that gives you a five inch tail. You leave yourself 10 inches for uh, a, to put together to make a five inch loop. And then that leaves you with five inches for the other tail. So two up underneath and bring that right side up which makes a real difference on this ribbon then this is the next two so we're going to start down from center my thumb being center when it down from center back and twist Candace gave me this ribbon for Christmas and I have not used it yet. I need to find a place to put this bow. This is one pretty combination, I think, huh? Okay, now we're on to the next part of the pattern, or the next section. How do I want to put that? <laughs> My brain is not synapsing quite correctly yet, I don't think. I think I'm stuffed up in the head here. Ugh. And twist. And <coughs> Sam is fixing to bark at me. What is he barking at? Oh my goodness. And this time we're going to turn down from center. 
Sam. And down from center. Sam, of course he's not here, he's out on the walk. Oh, this is gonna be a pretty battle. Oh my goodness, what a pest. Samson. <laughs> Sam. Up from center, but this is the last two. Oh my goodness. I'm so sorry. And down. I can't stop in the middle. <laughs> Sam, hang on. And one more. Oh, gracious. And twist. Grab my. Pipe cleaner. Go over the top and pull it around the back. Hang on, bud. <laughs> Use your hand as that you're using to hold the bow shut as resistance and twist. And Sam and I are going to take a trip outside. And I will come back and fluff in just a second. Alrighty, okay. I'm back. And uh, both dogs have been out and both have been fed and watered. <laughs> and Chris, or Sam's going in there to get some more water. Anyway, this one turned out pretty, didn't it? So this was a 10 loop bow, refreshing my own memory here, 10 loop bow, and I made it a two up, two down, two up, two down, two up pattern, which worked out really pretty. So I have no idea where I'll put this. <laughs> Maybe on somebody's gift next Christmas, huh? But it's pretty. Oh, now Sam's barking at somebody. And I like doing them at 20 inches like this, especially when I'm not doing it for a lantern or anything. Uh, that way I don't have all these tails, you know, flying around and I'm not knowing what to do with them. So, this turned out really pretty. I'm super happy with that one. So there's bow number, I was gonna make five, so this is three out of six now. Yeah, I'm making, let me get a little sip of my tea here. That is no longer hot. But where's my cup warmer, huh? <laughs> I don't have anywhere over here to plug it in. Chris, barking at Chris, like they don't know him. <laughs> there we go. They are special, these two. All right, my next one, I'm gonna make a nine loop bow. I'm gonna do it in a burlapy color, kind of with a red stripe. And then I'm gonna do a uh, red kind of a linen burlapy feel with a burlap stripe. And then I'm gonna do burlap and red stripes. And we're gonna do a nine loop bow. And we're gonna make them the tail, or we're gonna make them 26 inches long, the lengths of ribbon, at 26 inches long. That way, that'll give me plenty of room to do whatever I want to with this. I may not do anything with it right now, but eventually I'll use it on something. And I'd rather have longer tails than too short of a, too long of a tail than too short of a tail for whatever project I come up with. So I'm going to cut three lengths at 26 inches of each of these ribbons and dovetail them, and then I will be back and we'll put this together. Let's speed through this part though. This part is boring even for me to sit here and do it. <laughs> I'll be right back in just a few minutes. Okie dokie, here we go. I've got everything laid out into a pattern. But this is an easy one because well, this is a nine loop bow. Again, I'm making them all at 26 inch lengths. So therefore I'm gonna have an eight inch tail. I'm gonna to go to uh, eight plus 10 is 18 to give me the five inch loop. And then this will give me the other eight inch tail down this way. 
So really and truly, you just fold it right in half. Make sure you have a five inch loop pinch together and again go to that back tail twist it to bring the right side forward even if it is two-sided ribbon you may not think that it's two-sided but even texture wise sometimes it is and we're going to change direction each time this time so make sure I have a five inch loop and turn it the other direction and every time we pick up a piece of ribbon we're going to turn it a different direction either up from center which is my thumb or down from center and there we go and now what did I forget to do I forgot to twist that back tail this is gonna make a really big kind of big full bow I can tell already for one thing I'm making it all out of two and a half inch ribbon all three ribbons that I'm using are two and a half inches and it's all very stiff and full ribbon. So it's all going to, it's gonna make a big bow, trust me. Again, turning it the other direction. You can see I'm gonna have big tails. I'm gonna have a lot of, a lot of tail overage, but that's okay. You know, I don't know what I'm gonna use this for. And as I said, I'd rather have too long of tails than too short. So, and twist my whole, the whole width of my, from my fingers back to the crook of my thumb is getting filled in with ribbon now. Okay, next, fold in half, five inch loop, twist, pinch, to the back twist pull that loop up next fold it in half pull that loop kind of up my hand is definitely cramping <laughs> and twist Really like this red stripe. This is nice. Twist. And one more. And it's going to go up this direction. And my hand that I'm holding this bow hook closed with is screaming at me. It is hurting like the Dickens right now, but that's okay. I'm going to persevere. It's worth it. <laughs> okay, my red pipe cleaner here. I go across the top and snug it underneath my thumb that you can barely see right now. Kind of find the center point of the pipe cleaner. And pull it around to the back. And I've got a lot of ribbon here. I've got a lot, I've got a handful of ribbon. So try to pull it around and smush that ribbon together as best you can and then twist that ribbon because you're going to have a lot in there and keep twisting for a little while. There we go. Shake that hand out. Now the fun part, fluffing. That's what makes a bow. As I've said, a, you know, a thousand times, fluff, fluff, fluff. The more you fluff, the bigger and prettier your bow will become, honest to goodness. And go all the way down, try to get your hand all the way down there and pull it apart right down to where it snugs together at the, at the pipe cleaner. And you can manipulate these loops to go whichever direction you want them to go. You want one in the back, push it to the back and pull the other one forward. Just be sure that your pipe cleaner is nice and tight and then that'll give you plenty of room to manipulate your bow, you know, if you have that, if you have that pipe cleaner nice and tight. That way you don't have to be afraid of it coming undone and losing your whole, everything you just work so hard to get. Separate your tails out if you want. Keep them together if you want. Pull some up between the, the ribbons if you want. And you can trim them down if you want, as you all have seen me do a hundred million times, huh? When I get it on a lantern or on a wreath, I, you know, I'll trim these tails down to fit 
whatever it is I'm creating. So it's just, it, you know, trust yourself. If nothing else comes out of this, if you get nothing else out of this video, please hear me when I say to trust yourself and trust your gut, you guys. If you put three ribbons together and you go, oh, that doesn't look very good, they don't look good together, then they're probably not gonna look good together in a bow. Now I can already tell that I'm gonna wanna cut these, I don't know what I'm gonna use it for, but you know, if I were gonna put this on a lantern, I can already tell that these are way too long and I'd wanna trim them down. You know, but I'm not gonna do it right now because I don't wanna, I don't wanna mess something up if I figure out I wanna, you know, before I figure out what I wanna do with it. So I am totally making these bows for you guys, you know, out of my ribbon, because I know I'm gonna use it eventually somewhere, you know. But there we go, isn't that pretty? I mean, I'll even say that's pretty. That is a pretty funky bow right there. The tails are a little much for me, but that's okay. You may like it like that, you know? And again, if you like it, that's all that matters. Don't worry yourselves about who, who is gonna like it and who is not gonna like it. If you're making it for yourself, now if you're gonna make it to sell, then yeah, you need to worry about, you know, your, who you're making it for and how they might like it or what how they might perceive it. But if you're making something for your own home, Shucks, you guys, you know, what? if you think it's pretty, it's going to look pretty in your home, you know. So trust yourselves. Trust that you can do this. Trust that what you make is going to be just as pretty as this, if not prettier, you guys. So please, please, please have confidence. Have self-confidence in yourself that you can do it. If I can do this, you can do this, you know. So there we go. I'm gonna make the next one with uh, 20 inch tails, I think, and you'll see the difference in the tails. So, there we go. All right, next up, I have, I'm gonna use one of these real pretty florally ones. I'm gonna use, actually I'm gonna use two of them today. I'm gonna to use this navy blue, or the rosy color with navy blue, and the navy blue solid, and that pink. So as you all know, I just got these last week at Hobby Lobby. So again, I'm gonna make a nine loop bow, but I'm gonna make it only, I'm only gonna make the tails, instead of them being eight inches long, I'm gonna make them five inches long. And you'll see the difference in how it looks. And this will not be as, as massive of a bow as that one because, for two reasons. One, because I'm not gonna make the tails as long and two because I'm using one ribbon that is more narrow this is these are both two and a half inches in width and this is one and a half inch so this will look totally different than that big you know burlapy bow looked so let me cut get my strips cut at 20 inches three of each and I'll be right back I'm gonna go ahead and dovetail them too so I'll be right back Okie dokie, you guys, here we go. This ribbon, you guys, if you can't get to Hobby Lobby, oh my goodness, this is like denim. It really is. It is beautiful and thick and nice and wired, you know? Oh, it is lovely, just lovely. I had to say it, stop and say that. All right, here we go. And of course, I love this. And we'll see how this goes. This, this pairs beautifully with the pink in the ribbon, see that? So we'll see. All right, again, I'm going to change directions each time I make a loop. And again, I'm gonna fold it right in half. Find me 15, or I mean, a five inch bow, excuse me, or five inch loop, excuse me. Yes, I can talk, I think I can anyway. <laughs> we'll go back to the back tail and twist. Oops, to bring that forward. I'm kind of all thumbs now, aren't I? And then, this is double-sided ribbon, so you really don't have to worry too much, but then this time I turn it, I twist, and I always pull the loops forward or pull them toward me each time I make one. I don't know why, that's kind of just become a habit of mine. As you all know, I'm not an old hat at making these funky bows. And while I'm at it here, 
I, I, as I'm talking here, I'm just going to be turn, you know, switching directions each time and going into that back tail and twisting. Uh, but I don't, I can't take credit for the funky bell, even though I make a ton of them. I can't take credit for figuring how how to make a funky bell. I must give that credit to Ju Julie Samaka over there at Southern Charms Wreaths. She is the, where I learned to do it. I'm thinking she came up with it to herself, but you know what, I'm not totally sure of that. But uh, that's who I'm giving credit to because that is where I learned how to make a, the basic concept from her anyway. I've tweaked my own, you know, and made it, you know, my bow's my own. And I do them a little differently than she does them. But uh, that's where I learned how to do the basic concept. If y'all haven't checked out her channel, do so, because she does some beautiful work. And she, I think she's got a wreath of the month club that she does and she has all she does all kinds of stuff over there so check her out julie samaka at southern charms wreaths love to give her a shout out i love to give people shout outs if i am not the creator the you know of something now i will give myself credit for my lanterns <laughs> and my lantern centerpieces y'all know i'll give myself i'll go ahead and I'll say pat myself on the back or whatever I'm not like that but you know I will say that I did come up with that was my original design my lantern centerpieces but not the funky bow definitely not the funky bow and uh, I always like to give credit where credit is due well, what do they say imitation is the sincerest form of flattery right you know so I'm grateful to Julie for figuring out how to make it if she's the one that did. One more. I'm really liking this bow. Ah. There we go. Now, I have a black. I don't have a navy blue pipe cleaner. So I grabbed a black one out. I don't even have a pink one this color. So <laughs> we're gonna use black. Okay, take your black pipe cleaner or a pipe cleaner Find the center, put it beside your thumb, snug it underneath your thumb, and pull it around to the back. I love making bows, and I'm, I'm, I cannot be any happier. I've, for years and years, I tried to learn how to make big, flouncy bows like this, and I could never find a way to do it, and never, to be honest with you, had confidence enough in myself to try, honestly, to try something new. But anyway, here we go. Let me talk a little bit about this bow here while I'm fluffing. As you can see, some of the tails are uh, coming up and into and in between some of the loops, and that's fine. Kind of let it do what it wants to do. And I'm finding all of the, all of the loops, and I'm kind of pulling them toward the, the front and top. There's no top or bottom, really. It's just kind of, you know, I mean, you can make it have a top or bottom if you want to put it on something that, you know. Or you can make it look longer or wider just by the way you manipulate the, the loops. And again, getting way down right next to where you've got it tied. And make sure that all of it is fluffed up and puffed up as much as you can. Because the bigger the loops are, the bigger the bow's going to look and the fuller the bow's gonna look. And who doesn't want a big, full, pretty, funky bow, huh? I kinda let the, the navy blue kinda take a back seat to the pink and the, and the floral. One, because it's a heavier material, and it just kinda wants to do that, and I'm gonna let it. And two, because I like the way it looks. I like that the navy blue is kind of a background. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? Ooh, I'm really liking that. Like that, honey? Yeah, he says, yeah. Pretty funky bow. There we go. My last one is going to be made out of this black floral. 
you know where I'm making it for? I thought, you know what, now that I'm looking at this, I don't think I like the, I don't think I like the burlap. I think I want to go find like a cream or a white. Because this really doesn't have one lick of burlap in it. Or I could maybe use a silver, huh? Why couldn't I use a silver? That would be pretty. Or, no, I don't like that. I don't like that, even though I like the ribbon better than the silver. I do like the silver with it, that's pretty. All right, that's what I'm making. I'm not running anywhere, I'm gonna stay right here. And I'm going to make a uh, 20 loop. So I need five strips of each, and I'm gonna make them 20 inch strips, and then I'm gonna give it two tails. Cause you know where I'm making it? I'm, I'm sitting here at my kitchen table and my ivy table's right there. And I'm making it to go with that plaque, love the life you live. I'll show you a picture right here. So as you can see, that picture has all of these colors in it. As a matter of fact, it even has silver on the edges of the flowers. Well, hello there. So that is really, this is really gonna work out well. And I'm, that's where I'm planning on hanging this when I'm finished or when I redecorate. So here we go, five. And I'm gonna go ahead and make them 20. I am gonna make them 20. I'm not gonna, I can see by looking at that one that I made that 26, but I don't want to. I made each one of that bow that's on it right now 26, but I like the 20 inches better. So I'm going to make, cut five strips of each color, dovetail them all, and then I will be right back and we will put this bow, big bow, together. Okie dokie, I'm back. Now, as you can see, I wouldn't have room to spread out the, the entire patterns of each pile. So what I've done, here's my, my, the pattern that I'm going to put this to bow together in. And, you know, and usually the way I choose my patterns, too, is uh, like I have two narrow ribbons and two wider ribbons. So I want to alternate them, you know. So, and I also, all these are, are solids, so it really doesn't matter. You know, if I wanted to put the, it doesn't matter which, which way you do as far as patterns are concerned, because it all gets mixed up anyway. But I do like to alternate the sizes, just in my own head. So, I, as you can see, I have these four piled up in order. So, I am going to put each pattern in the same direction. In other words, I'm going to go ahead and fold it in half, go to, fifth, go to five, a five inch loop, make sure I have a five inch loop, and go to that back tail and twist. So I'm going to go through the whole pattern here, going up from center, center being my thumb. and twist all four colors I can't tell which side is that's pretty good on this one because I can't tell which is right and which is wrong on this one which is not a bad thing Now, here's my next four. So I'm going to turn these four, all four of them, and go down from center. I'll tell you the truth too, I'm going to about four and a half inches on these loops. I seem to just have started that, so I'm continuing on with that pattern. <laughs> so these loops are gonna be about four and a half inches long as opposed to five, which is fine. Just be consistent, you know. Two. Again, all the way through the pattern of ribbons that I have, 
the different the four different ribbons that I have going the same direction. And yes, my hand is screaming at me. This has got to be my last one. Because my hand is like, I will not do more than this. I don't think I can. <laughs> can see how flouncy this bow is going to be. There we go. The next four, we're going to go up from center. And two more piles. Which way did I go on that one up? So I need to go down on this one. The longer the day has moved, moved along here, I, my body is telling me, you need to stop. One more up from center. Get my pipe cleaner. Go over my, right along the by side of my thumb and snug it underneath and pull this all the way around to the back and pull tight and twist. And you know what I'll do also so I'm going to get it put on that. What I do is I tie this on the, the picture holder that I have up there. I tie it on one of the feet and hang it from that. So I can put the tails on it now. I'm going to make them probably 20 inches long a piece or thereabouts. about dovetailing them because I know I'm, I'll cut them up a little bit. Put it right side down. A bit of Pioneer Woman Inspire, huh? I can see that a little bit. All right. I'll be right back in front of the camera to say my goodbyes. Be right back in just a second. Okie dokie everybody, I'm back. I'm sorry, I know I'm looking a little rough here. I've certainly had better days. <laughs> but I've got two things going against me here. One, I'm sick. And two, I get my hair done on Wednesday. So, you know, hopefully I'll be better by Wednesday. Better enough I think I will be to get my hair done. But anyway, I am super happy that we got this one done. And as you can see, yes, definitely, you can certainly do a funky bow with narrow ribbon. Look at that. I'm really happy with how these two turned out. And I actually probably would combine them, to be honest. Or I would use more ribbon to make this. I, again, that's just me, though. I like a really big, fat, funky bow. And this isn't big and fat enough for me. So I would probably make it every bit of, I mean, those two combined would be 20, what about 40 at least, or 35 at least loops, you know? So I think that would be the key to making a funky bow look big and pretty and interesting is if you have a lot of loops and a lot of tails and so on. So... You know, that would be really pretty on a, on a birthday gift or, you know, on a, like a baby shower gift or something like that. That'd be really pretty. So, or something with like Mickey Mouse themed something or another. That'd be cute, huh? So, it can be done. 
Uh, I would just say the, the key is lots and lots of loops for sure. And then this one turned out really pretty with the, with the rose gold and the, you know, and the silver combined. I think that's super pretty. Really love that one. And then, of course, this nice country one with the big, big uh, tails on it, which look a little crazy right now. But, you know, of course, I would tame down <laughs> if I was using it somewhere else. And then my two bows that I'll put in my decor coming up here, my uh, Pioneer Woman inspired decor. This one with the navy blue turned out so pretty. And these are the ones with the 20-inch 20, uh, 20 strips, which I, I really tend to like more than the 26 ones. And I very rarely make the 30-inch ones anymore. So with the 10-inch tails, they were pretty crazy. But... Anyway, this one, and then this is by far my favorite of the day. This one, which I think is going to look really pretty with that sign. Chris has handed me this sign. <laughs> and this is what I made this bow to go with. Check it out. Can you guys see? And it will go right on the end. Ah, oh, hello. Oh, my goodness. And, of course, I'll fix it better when it gets up there. But how pretty will that look, you guys? It looks like the bouquet in it, in it. I love it. Oh my goodness. All right. <laughs> well, that worked out well, huh? See, this is, I, I, I just thought of this when I was standing in the, this, when I was standing in the garage, I think. I said, let me make a couple of bows that will go with something I know is gonna stay in my decor. And this is definitely staying in my decor. And this will look really pretty with it. Oh, my goodness. Alrighty, you guys, so that is it for today. And my funky bow extravaganza. <laughs> I hope you all enjoyed this one. I hope you learned something. And again, let me say, please, please, please stay confident in yourselves. Be confident in yourselves. Don't be intimidated by this ribbon. You tame the ribbon. <laughs> you make it go the way you want to go. You want it to go. And, and honest to goodness, you can't go wrong. Just try. Don't be afraid to try. You might be surprised at what you come up with. And if I can do it, honest to goodness, anybody can do it. And if it does, again, let me reiterate, if it doesn't look pretty, if the, if the bow com or the ribbon combinations doesn't look pretty to you, then don't do it. Only put bow combination or ribbon combinations together that look pretty to your eye. And when, so when you put the bow together, it's going to look pretty when you're finished. So, but don't let it intimidate you. <laughs> all righty uh let me just say i hope that all is well with everyone i hope that everybody's health is going along as it should and i'm not talking about just colds of course i hope that none of you get this i mean this is pretty pretty miserable it's it's pretty pretty yucky and ugh. i think somebody called it the walking crud and that's about what i feel like that's kind of yucky but that's how i feel and, uh, but I hope none of you have, have been suffering with this daggone flu that's going around or, or that any of you have any other worse health problems or chronic problems, fibromyalgia and other things like that. You know, my heart goes out to you and y'all are always in my prayers. Y'all know that. But I hope that, you know, that if you do ha are suffering with something like that, that you have something that a good doctors and good medication to help you get through each day uh, feeling pretty good. Uh, I hope there's nothing pulling your attention away from where you want it to be or where it should be. And with that, me and all my funky bows will just say, until next time, y'all take good, good care. Bye-bye.